Well, I recently had John A. Light mm-hmm. on my show. He was the hitman for John Gotti. Right. And he went down this, we went through this long list of people that he shot or baseball batted or stabbed. Mm-hmm. It was like 20-something people. And he's giving, like, detailed. Oh, yeah, this guy, yeah. Uh, it was in front of uh, Polly's uh, restaurant, and it was about 4 o'clock, and this guy said this. So I went out to my car, and I got my gun, and I shot him and shot his friend, and then this other guy ran away. And it was like, <laughs> God damn, like. <laughs> what, so what, is the statute of limitations over with? Well, he, when he had he already taken there? his, I guess he had taken his deal, and the way I guess he had. It was structured. The that way he was structured, basically, he could yeah. say whatever he wants. He, yeah. he was extradited from uh, Brazil, and based on the deal, it was like they could only get him for this. And mm. that's oh, that. he was on the run for a while. He was on the run. Yeah, they oh, caught him okay. in Rio de Janeiro. He was like in. In 20- what year? How many years later? A couple of years. He basically he started naming all the countries. Because I know he was they in. got John Gotti back, but in the nineties. Yeah. Then, so, when did they grab him? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't want to put out the wrong Okay. Thing, no, but, no doubt. No doubt. But, but he they, ran for a minute. He ran for a minute. Good. He ended up in a Brazilian prison, and then they, they pulled him out and extradited him back and and so forth. And, you know, he knew um, Sammy the Bull. Uh-huh. I guess they came out of the same crew. Yeah, they did. And uh, I actually just talked to Sammy the Bull the other day. <laughs> Somebody put us on the phone again. Right. That, that was an interesting conversation, <laughs> to say the least. Um. And they're just talking about sort of the violence that the, you know, this guy basically was just violent. That was his job. He'd wake up every morning and go do some violence and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about how uh, there's just not a lot of people. You know, it wasn't like the mafia had like 20 killers on every crew. There's like one or two guys that kind of put in the work. Yeah. Is that similar? Were you seeing like, you know, on the Crip side? Or did no, everyone pretty much put in work? Everybody had to put in work. Everybody had to put in work. I mean, you know, it's you can get away with doing an act or two if it's, you know, if it's of high note and it's like, no, he was with the homies when they did that or whatever. But, yeah, you got to put your work in. That's how you get notorious. That's how your gang gets notorious. You know, it's there's no cool gang bangers. You know what I mean? Oh, I like that nigga. Man, he's straight, man. You, you don't do nothing but play bitches, man, and get money. You know, <laughs> I'm scared of him. You know, it don't work like that. You know, well, you gotta you gotta constantly enforce your G hand. You know what I mean? For it to really make a stamp, and that's that's what gang bangers do. Is is ride? It ain't like okay, you know. Is we got five riders, so the rest of y'all 50 stand behind us, and we're we going to take the lead and make this happen. It's like, no, everybody got to pull their weight, or you're going to get exposed and dealt with. Well, I interviewed King Tone of the Latin Kings. Latin Kings. That was a hell of an interview. Mm-hmm. You watched it at all? Yeah. What would you think? Good. Smart man. He is. Yeah. He is. Got very emotional at times. Yeah. He got a little mad at me. A couple of times. Who don't, Blake? Who don't get mad at it? <laughs> but it created a hell of an interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about some of the violence coming out of the Latin Kings. Mm-hmm. At one point, when, when a war had broken out over, I guess, the leadership, when King Blood, I guess, had got locked up and there was a bit of a uncertainty as to who was going to run the, the New York Latin Kings, one of the members was found with his Latin King's tattoo c- cut out, his body burned burned up, decapitated, and the head was never found. Have you ever heard of stuff like this? I have, but I, I've i never participated in no shit like that. Once a motherfucker dead, he dead, man, I'm done. <laughs> you, know I mean? you ain't gotta play I with a body. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. He, he did shoot him again. He did. Okay, let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love, yeah the, the extra macabre shit and all that. I, I'm I'm not into that shit. I mean, have you ever? Did you? And I'm not going to have you say any names, but no, no. Did you know people that were just like? Yes. Just evil. Yes, I know several of them. I know several of them. 
it's people that really like to kill and and, and I know I know I know a massacre dude. And, and and the whole nine. I know a dude that killed a couple of people. Went to the park, had the dead bodies in the back of his car. Somebody wanted to go to the store. He gave him the keys to his car. <laughs> and they got, they, got, they got a few blocks down and damn near lost their motherfucking mind. Yeah, I know. I know, I know some sick Sure, people. take my car. Yeah, yeah. I With know the corpses. Some, I no, know don't, some mind, sick no, don't mind the smell. <laughs> Yeah, I know some sick people. Get a get an extra pine tree up there in the front. <laughs> It'll hide it just fine. Yeah, yeah. So he gave a car to someone with two dead bodies inside. With the trunk or the back seat? It was a G-Rod in the back. Like literally lying in the back seat? No, it was a van. So he had a van, which is all open. There's no trunk. There's dead bodies. Seats. Just seats. Seats in the back. So there's two corpses in the back, and he gave that car to someone to go to the store? Yes. So they turn around, and they see these bodies. I assume I they didn't go to the imagine. store afterwards. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I <laughs> could just... And he did shit like this. This is this is a guy who, you know, he's a one-time killer. You know, he's just, you know, he just with that kind of activity. Is he in prison right now? No. Oh, he's out? Mm hmm I guess he never got caught for those bodies, huh? Not for those bodies, I don't think. For different bodies? Yeah. And he got out? Yeah. How much time did he get for a murder? Shit, he had been a pen a couple of times. Hmm. I don't know if he got found guilty for murder, but he's been, his name been in all kind of shit that then took place and he's been arrested for shootings. He'd, I'd have been to prison with him, everything. So he authentic. It ain't no... I wonder is he telling the truth? This motherfucker is the guy. So I know a couple of people like that though, that that thrive on that kind of shit, you know? It's they it's you know, it's just it's something that just get them off. You know what I mean? It's beyond just, okay, we gotta do this to further the hood and make sure, you know, they don't aggress upon us. You know, it's like more a, of a preemptive strike. You know, it's like these people just yeah, you know, I know a few people that just get off on doing wild shit. Huh. Did you ever, like, have conversations with them and maybe get an idea of I laugh. Where, where it started? I laugh. I laugh. What do you mean? It's funny to me. What's funny? Sick people. Really? Yeah, I mean, that do that kind of shit is like something wrong with you. And you you know something is wrong with you, but you acting normal still. You know what I mean? So it's it's hilarious to me that you try to pass yourself off as being just a regular motherfucker when you know you crazy as fuck. So, so they're just crazy? Yeah. I mean, they just got a, a bent for violence. You know what I'm saying? Like you got people that skywalk, you know what I mean? Just, you know, on the tightrope. Thousands of feet in the air with no net, just, a, you know, I mean, you know, it's just people that just like doing that kind of shit, climb the side of mountains with no ropes and no nothing, you know, come on, man, that shit is nuts. Yeah, like I just watched a documentary about Ted Bundy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this guy had a girlfriend and she had a daughter and he would go hang out with the, do family stuff with them. You know, they would go on picnics and go hiking and whatever, and then he would leave for a couple of days, go kill some women, <laughs> some young girls, like 17, 18 year olds, would like kill them and rape them, and then go back. He to was the married street. too, wasn't he? No, he wasn't married, but he had a, a serious girlfriend. Okay, she yeah, I knew of, he was yeah, there. She, with she was part of this documentary. He'd yeah. go back to his regular family life and be a stepdad, kind of, you know, like a living boyfriend and and like. The girlfriend had no idea. That's like a killing fetish. I think it's different in the gang atmosphere, you know, because you don't think you, this you're guy, eliminating your you're you're eliminating rivals. You don't think this guy had a killing fetish? This guy with the two two dead bodies in the back seat. I think he just was eliminating his enemies. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like something he that didn't bother him to do. You know what I'm saying? That he liked the sport of the whole thing. So. You know, but 
it was a purpose behind what he was doing, not the showing them off and letting nobody drive the car with him in the back, but I mean, by the killing. This killing Ted Bundy was doing, it was just for the pleasure of the murder. You well, getting yeah. rid of your you getting rid of your rivals when you're a gang member and you killing people that might kill you if they seen you at the store. So it's like a it's like a battle for survival 